Now, from the makers of Coldwater Omo, at the peace conference, Baron von Kurt and Mrs. Peel were searching amongst the guests for John Steed. Any luck? No sign of him. But Jose's men insist that he's here. You know you said that you don't like crowds. Steed doesn't either. Ah, then he'll be in one of the anterooms this way. You take that side, I'll take this. It was then that Mrs. Peel found Roller dead. Steed! Oh, Steed! Oh, no. And the Baron found Mintoff dead. Oh, S Senor Steed. Oh, no. Baron! Baron, I found him in the other room. And... He's been killed. Yes. Yes, there is another body of Steed here. What does it all mean? The Avengers. John Steed and Emma Peel, The Avengers. There is no dirt that can stand up to the cleaning power of cold water Omo. Over one million South African housewives have proved it. And Mrs. Bodington is one of them. My wash is beautiful. Mm -hmm. And I'm very proud of it. My husband particularly wears a lot of white plain bowls and his clothing always looks delightful. There's nothing like cold water Omo. Yes, once an Omo user, always an Omo user. Cold water Omo is the washing powder that cleans best. Keep your complexion soft and young looking with the creamy, moisturizing lather of Lux. Like Claudia Cardinale, choose Lux. Lux, a beauty treatment as you bathe. <laughs> Episode 5 of this story, in which John Steed gets back into the action, and Mrs. Peel and the Baron hear too many arguments and too many olays. John Steed, still held a prisoner in the damp room beneath the bull ring, strained at the handcuffs that held him to the bed rail. He knew he had to get out before one of the four men impersonating him got to the peace conference and planted a percussion bomb in the chairman's gavel. What Steed didn't appreciate, of course, was that each of the agents thought he was the only one looking like John Steed. The result of this was that every time they met each other, they thought they'd met the real Steed. Perova had met both Rother and Mintoff, and had, without hesitation, killed them both. Mrs. Peel and the Baron were quite bewildered. So, for that matter, was Captain Jose. It's astonishing, amazing. If I hadn't seen it for myself, I would never have believed it. Both look exactly alike. And both look exactly like John Steed. But which one is Steed? Neither. Both are duplicates. How the transformation has been achieved, we will never know. But there it is. Two dead steeds. I think we need a drink, uh, don't you, Emma? A large one. Uh, she's very, very serious. A guard! Senor Capitano, give orders. All the guards alerted. Shoot to kill. What? Senor. What does that mean, Captain? Uh, Mrs. Peel, it is a difficult decision. But it is clear that someone wants to infiltrate the conference. There must be a plan to wreck it somehow. And someone has created a duplicate steed in order to do so. Well? Well, under these circumstances, we must conclude that the real steed is dead. And so, any other steed must be shot on sight. But John Steed was far from dead. He was working on the bed rail, bending the metal to breaking point. 
Arcos and Markin looked up occasionally from their game of cards. It should not be long now before we hear the news, Arcos. I have no doubt that Nadine will achieve success, Markin. He has complete instructions. The whole of the conference room will be blown to little pieces. Our job will be over. We can go home and claim the money. Retire with the satisfaction of a job well done. Uh, what about him? Markin indicated Steed with a greasy finger. Easy. I don't think things will ever get to that state, gentlemen. Steed gave one last enormous tug at the bed rail. The rail broke away. Of course. Steed, using the rail, made for Markin. He swung the rail. <laughs> Arcos made for his gun, reaching across the table. Steed brought the bed rail down over his hand. Ah! The gun went off harmlessly. Steed got in a terrific punch, smack on the right spot of Arcos's jaw. Oh! Oh, that'll teach you to click your castanets at me. Doing all right at the moment, aren't you, Steed? <laughs> The rest of the escape was easy. Steed got out of the deserted bull ring and into the nearest taxi. Uh, Hello, Steed, in English. In English. Uh, English. Uh, si, uh, little senor. Then you will take me to the peace conference peace. Uh, and accept my grandfather's gold watch as a temporary uh, payment. Uh, uh, si, senor. Okay. Si. It didn't take long to reach the Baron's home where the peace conference was about to begin. Steed's taxi drew up just as the fourth disguised agent, Giorgio, arrived in his car. Uh, excuse me, I've just seen someone I know. Steed walked swiftly across to Giorgio's car. Before the astonished agent could react, Steed opened the car door, found himself gazing at his own face and said, I hate to do this to those noble features. And threw a punch at Giorgio. Giorgio rode it and grabbed a gun. The two Steeds <laughs> grappled. <laughs> In the struggle, the gun went off. Giorgio collapsed, slumped forward over the front seat. That's four down, Steed, and one to go. Oh, no. Meanwhile, Perova, now the only disguised Steed left, had got into the conference room and was working on planting the small bomb in the chairman's gavel. It took a little time, and the delegates were making their way along the corridor as he completed the task. Moreover, placed the gavel on the table at the right hand of the chairman's seat and disappeared through the French windows. I now have to wait. The big bang. John Steed entered the building at top speed. The two guards at the door had no time to raise their rifles. Steed said, Good afternoon, Buenos starters, and hit their heads together. <laughs> He then made off up the corridor at a furious pace, crashing into the conference room. Just as the chairman, raising the gavel, said, Now, gentlemen, may I call the meeting to order? No, no, put that thing down. Here, give it uh, to me. Pardon? Steed hurled himself at the chairman, grabbed at the gavel, hesitated for a fraction of a second, and then crashed his way through the windows out into the grounds. Oh. Steed threw the gavel as far away as possible and crouched in the bushes. You give me two ears and a tail for that. The effect upon the conference was catastrophic. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I can blow us up. He wants to... After him! After him! Get out the seat! Clear seat! Don't let him get away! You come to the exit! Search the ground! Don't worry. He won't get away. Emma Peel, who had witnessed all this along with the other guests, wasn't so sure. You know, Baron, it doesn't make sense. Uh, you're telling me. I cannot understand what is going on in my own home. Which steed was that? Well, the point is, whoever it was didn't blow up the conference. Pardon? He didn't blow up the place. He had the bomb in his hand, but he crashed his way out into the open with it. No alternative. He was surprised. The guards were after him. I wonder. You don't think that... I mean, you, you don't imagine that he was the real steed? Not a chance. Come on, let's get out into the grounds. I know them better than anyone. I want to get in on this, too. Out on the grounds, John Steed dodged from cover to cover. Perova had heard the sound of the explosion and thought his plan to wreck the conference and kill its delegates had succeeded. 
But then he heard the orders shouted by Captain Jose and thought they were after him. He also went into hiding. Mrs. Peel, separated temporarily from the Baron, was crawling her way through the undergrowth, gun in hand, when... Mrs. Peel. Stay where you are. Don't move. Me? The real me? Stay still and put your hands up. Mrs. Peel. Emma, if I wasn't the real me, how would I know who you are? Whoever impersonates John Steed must have done their homework. They'd know all about me. Don't move. Look, your last birthday, I took you to Quags for supper. Stay still. Uh, we had uh, caviar... Quail's eggs, smoked sturgeon, lobster thermidor, and wild strawberries out of season. Hmm? Well, how did you find that out? Well, I hadn't been there. You had two helpings of strawberries. You could have followed us. Anyone could have seen that. Well, then we went back to my apartment, and no one could have seen what went on back there. Oh? At least I hope not. I'm not convinced. What was I wearing? At Quags or the flat? You had an embroidered cuff tie. And shoes? Gold, but you kicked them off before we got home. Threw them under the settee. And uh, on the city, uh, you've got a little tipsy and very, very amorous. Steed. Oh, Steed, it really is you. It is. Oh, Steed. Over here. Shh, shh, shh. Now, now, lie still. Steed. Steed, what is going on? There's no time to explain it all, but we've got to grab the real villain of the piece. His name is Arkos, and he's hiding out in an old bullring near here. Well, you may have convinced me, but it won't be as easy with them. They've got orders to kill you. They'll shoot first and talk later. I'll manage somehow. Steed, was I very amorous? I still bear the scars. Um, think you can pinch a car, Mrs. Peel? Think. I passed car theft instructions with an A+. Plus. Well, off you go, then. Bring it back there by the trees. I'll be waiting. Right. Mrs. Peel shot out of cover and made for the car park. A short while later... Mrs. Peel arrived in a smart new car, parked it at the place agreed upon, opened the door, and moved over to greet Steed. But it was Perova who stepped out from behind the tree. So, you have brought me a car. How very thoughtful. Steed! I am afraid not. Perova raised a revolver, pointed it straight at Mrs. Peel, his finger tightened over the trigger. But the Baron crashed his way through the bushes and with his sword lunged forward. Oh, no! <laughs> Ole. One blow, and that's the last of them out of the way. You're on your own from now on, Steed. And with a vicious uppercut, Jimmy Anderson finishes trimming his whole hedge in just three hours, 11 minutes. Great work, Jimmy. You play any other sport? Yes, dominoes. You're looking pretty cool, Jimmy. What deodorant do you use? Shield for sportsmen, of course. Why? It works. Shield for sportsmen deodorant won't stick, sting, or stain. In aerosol or roll-on, it's made to keep sportsmen cool and dry. Think what it can do for you. The cleaning power of cold water Omo gives you the superb cleanness you want from a washing powder. Listen to Mrs. Baxter of Claremont. It really is good, you know. I mean, it's, it's unbelievable, really, that, that it could be so good, you know. Once an Omo user, always an Omo user. The Avengers. <laughs> Listen every evening, Monday to Friday, to John Steed and Emma Peel, The Avengers. Brought to you by the makers of Coldwater Omo. <laughs>